In this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase to go on and on. This is a phrase we use sometimes when we're talking about someone who talks a lot and won't stop talking. You could say, oh, whenever I talk to him, he has a tendency to go on and on. He just talks about stuff and he never stops talking about it. Sometimes when people are upset, they'll go on and on when they talk to you about it. Uh, you can also use this to describe a trip or a movie, like you might be watching a movie that's four hours long, and as you sit there, you might think, is this movie going to go on and on forever? It should end soon, shouldn't it? So when you say that something goes on and on, a conversation or a movie, it just means that it doesn't seem to ever stop. The second phrase I wanted to teach you today is the phrase to go ballistic. So the word ballistic comes from, I think bullets or missiles, like it's the trajectory of how they fly. I don't know. I don't know the science. But when you say that someone goes ballistic, when you say that guy, sometimes he has a tendency to go ballistic, it means they get really, really angry. When someone goes ballistic, it means they're not just angry. They're like level 10 angry. They're just losing it. They're just saying all kinds of things and yelling and screaming and just, yeah, they're going ballistic. So to review, when someone goes on and on, or when you say that someone uh, tends to go on and on, it means that they talk and don't seem to stop. Or if you're describing a trip like, ah, this trip seems to go on and on. It just means that it's, uh, it doesn't seem like it's ending. And when you say that, uh, the phrase to go ballistic simply means to get really, really angry. Anyways, let's look at a comment from a previous video. This is harder in the winter when I try to get the papers in and out of my pocket. This comment is from Alex. Bob, I'd probably be scared of snakes in a place like that, especially by the riverbank. It's a good place for snakes in tropical countries like the one I live in. I don't know about there in your neck of the woods. Have you ever seen any snake or scorpion there? And my response is this. I actually live in a very safe place when it comes to wildlife. We only really have one small type of snake in this area called a garter snake, and it isn't dangerous. No scorpions either. Besides winter, this is a fairly safe place to live. So yeah, as some of you might know, as you watch these videos and get to know me a little bit better, I really don't like snakes. I'm scared of snakes. So I'm quite happy that I live in a country where the only snake we have is this tiny little snake, um, maybe up to 20 centimeters long, maybe 30. Uh, it doesn't bite. It's not, uh, I was going to say poisonous, but I think I'm supposed to say venomous. Um, actually, it does bite. I got bit by one as a kid, but it's not dangerous to get bit by them. Um, they're tiny. They kind of live in the grass and uh, they don't really bother anybody. And we don't have any, I mean, besides winter and really, really cold weather in the area I live, I feel really lucky. We don't have tornadoes. We don't have earthquakes. Um, there's flooding, but our house is really high up on a hill, so that doesn't really affect us either. So I do feel quite lucky. Now, you do have to be able to withstand really, really cold winters, and that can be challenging. Probably the most challenging thing in the winter is every once in a while, we won't have electricity for a day or two. So luckily, we still have a wood stove. Um, it doesn't happen very often. Um, in fact, it hasn't happened for a few years. But when the power goes out, when there's no electricity in the winter, that can be really worrisome. So we always keep a little bit of firewood around, enough to burn for a few days just in case the hydro goes out. Sorry, in Canada we sometimes say hydro. Anyways, that's the end of the lesson. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you actually Wednesday of next week with another one. Bye.